As kids, many of us fall in love with dinosaurs because of their awesome claws and sharp teeth. Although, once we get older, we're not as excited about them since they're no longer around. But what if I told you that there are still dinosaurs in the Philippines right now? In today's episode, I'll be going over the Philippines' last existing dinosaurs, the monitor lizards. What's poppin' y'all, and welcome back to The Fauna Fam, a show where I talk about all types of animals, whether domestic or wild. My name's Roque, and I'm a third-year vet student and part-time content creator. And this is Zuko, a two-year-old leopard gecko and certified cutie pie. If you want to see more of this cutie or learn more about vet school, consider subscribing so that you never miss a video. Aight, so monitor lizards, what the hell are they? While they technically aren't the closest relatives to the velociraptors, they do share a lot of common characteristics. Monitors are the largest type of lizards in the world under the genus Varanus, including the iconic Komodo dragon, which can reach up to 3 meters long. I really like Komodo dragons. Native to the countries in Africa, Asia, and Oceania, these lizards are known for their long necks and powerful claws and tails. Most of them are carnivorous and land-dwelling animals, but as you will learn today, they vary depending on where they live. There are about 50 to 60 species of monitor lizards in the world, with 11 of them belonging to the Philippines, and today, I'll be sharing with you who they are. First, let's start off with the most famous monitor in the Philippines, the yellow-headed monitor. I know this guy has a yellow head, but not him. Yellow-headed monitors, or Varanus kumingi, are endemic to the Philippines and can be found in lowland forests and mangroves of the island of Mindanao. Given their name, they are unique for having a bright yellow coloration specifically on their head. Known for its highest degree of yellow coloration amongst all monitors in the Philippines and possibly even the world. These species thrive in mangrove forests and water margins, which makes them excellent swimmers. They're primarily carnivores that feed on birds, small mammals, and even hunt for fish from time to time. While listed as least concerned under the IUCN, this particular species is under threat due to the destruction of our mangrove forests and the illegal pet trade. Next up, we have arguably the largest water monitor in the Philippines, the marbled water monitor. Come on, don't bite me. Okay, I'm gonna bring Zuko back into his enclosure because it's way past his bedtime and he's getting kind of cranky with me. The marbled water monitor, or the Varanus marmoratus, are one of the largest lizards in the Philippines, reaching up to 7 feet long. Though despite their size, they're not particularly aggressive and they're actually elusive of humans. These monitors are opportunistic foragers that feed on water snails, crabs, and decaying carcasses. Sounds gross, I know. But them eating decaying carcasses is actually very good for our ecosystem to help prevent spreading of diseases. They are great swimmers, given the name of water, and excellent climbers which they use to hunt for bird's nests. They can be found all across northern and central Luzon, with some even being spotted in Batanes, the northernmost tip of the Philippines. The biggest threats to their population is habitat loss and being killed for bushmeat, basically being eaten. Next, we have one of the most unique water monitors, the Bangon Water Monitor. Bangon Water Monitors, or Varanos Bangonorum, can only be found in the island of Mindoro and some adjacent islands. Bangonorum is a plural noun derived from the indigenous Bangon people of Mindoro Island. These monitors have been seen high up in the mountains at levels 230 meters above sea level spending most of its time in both the canopy and water streams. While looking similar to marbled monitors, they are distinct for its white throat, while most monitors have speckled throats. Not much is known about this animal, but their numbers have been dropping, mainly due to habitat loss and the illegal pet trade. Now this next monitor is my personal favorite, and it's the Gray's Water Monitor. Gray's Water Monitor, or Varanus olivaceus, are endemic to the Philippines and can be found in the lowland dipterocarp forests in southern Luzon, such as Catanduanes and Pililio Island. They are large water monitors, weighing up to 10 kilos for adults, and they are also arboreal, 
so they spend most of its days up in the trees in the canopy. On the contrary to most monitors, Grace monitors actually have an omnivorous diet, feeding on crabs, small mammals, while also eating ripe fruit. And these lizards actually have a particular taste for the pandan fruit, which makes them very important seed dispersers of our forests. Despite their large size, this species is actually very elusive of humans, making it extremely hard to document. Another interesting fact is unlike building a nest like most monitors, this species actually goes way up and lay their eggs in tree hollows. And they have an incubation period that lasts up to 219 days. But because of their long incubation period, this species has a hard time reproducing, and they are now labeled as vulnerable under IUCN's red list, mainly because of habitat loss, being consumed as a delicacy, and of course, the illegal pet trade. Luckily, these are one of the more studied monitors in the Philippines, with conservation efforts being done all across the globe. Next, we have the tourist superstar, the Palawan Water Monitor. The Palawan Water Monitor, or Varalos palawanensis, is endemic to the Philippines and can only be found in the islands of Palawan. These are also one of the best studied water monitor populations in the Philippines. They are the largest purely carnivorous monitor lizard in the country that feeds on mammals, reptiles, birds, amphibians, and other small prey. The Palawan water monitor can also climb trees thanks to its large claws and can swim long distances, holding its breath for up to 30 minutes. While their conservation status has not yet been updated, their numbers have been dropping mainly due to habitat loss. I was actually lucky enough to see one of these guys in person during my recent trip to Palawan. So if you want to see my interactions with this spectacular animal, make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe to my channel so that you can watch it once it's posted. Our next lizard is probably one of the coolest looking monitors that we have here in the Philippines and maybe even the world, the Panay Water Monitor. Panay Water Monitors, or Varanus Mabitang, are also called locally as Mabitang. They're an endangered monitor lizard native to the island of Panay in Visayas, as the name suggests. Unique for having a dark, dragon-like coloration with deep maroon eyes and large claws. They're also largely arboreal lizards, found in altitudes 200 to 1,000 meters above sea level. They are also frugivores, meaning that they thrive on fruit-like produce, such as roots, shoots, nuts, and seeds, making them very important seed dispersers for our ecosystem. However, they are labeled as endangered under the IUCN Red List because they are a favored hunting target and, of course, habitat loss. Up next, we have the large-scaled water monitor. Large-scaled water monitors, or Varanus nucalis, are distinct for having extraordinarily large nuchal scales, or the scales behind the neck. They are endemic to the Philippines and can only be found in some islands in Visayas. They can be found in both the forest and tidal areas, and they are currently labeled as near-threatened due to human consumption and the use for apparel, which is really such a shame because not much is known about this animal. This next lizard is similar to the Grace Monitor but just as cool, and it is the Northern Sierra Madre Forest Monitor. Northern Sierra Madre Forest Monitors, or Varanus bitatawa, are large arboreal lizards that are also frugivores and can grow up to 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet long. They have bluish black legs that are mottled with pale yellow green dots. Found in the northeastern side of the Sierra Madre, these monitors climb high up into the canopy of the forest up to 20 meters above ground. Some of the biggest threats to their population is that they are considered a delicacy among certain indigenous tribes and of course, the illegal pet trade. Our next monitor is one of the rarest monitors in the Philippines, the Rasmussen's Water Monitor. Rasmussen's Water Monitor, or Varanus Rasmusseni, are endemic to the Philippines and can only be found in the islands of the Salu Archipelago, such as Tawi-Tawi. This unique water monitor is mostly brown in color and has distinct narrow pale bars on the tail. They also have a much more slender face with front-facing nostrils. Due to its elusiveness, not much is known about this reptile. But due to the nature of its location, 
many assume that they are excellent swimmers and scavengers. This next monitor has a familiar look but with its own twist, and it is the Samar Water Monitor. Samar Water Monitors, or Varanos Samarensis, can be found specifically on the island of Samar in eastern Visayas. They are a close relative to the yellow-headed water monitor. Actually, they used to be classified as a yellow-headed water monitor until further research showed morphological differences. This species is very understudied, but many researchers believe that their numbers have been dwindling due to habitat loss as well. Our last monitor has one of the coolest origin stories for its name, and it is the Entengs Water Monitor. Entengs Monitor, or Varanos Dalubhasa, got its name from two origins. First, the Tagalog word Dalubhasa, meaning a person who is skilled at a particular subject or considered an expert. And secondly, to honor Vicente Ingente, or also known as Enteng, who had extensive knowledge about monitor lizards. These monitors can be found in shallow water streams and tall trees in southern Luzon, such as Quezon and Bicol province. Not much research has been conducted on this particular species, but what we do know is that they are one of the smallest water monitors in the Philippines, only reaching about 1 meter including the tail. And that concludes our list! If your only takeaway from this video is learning that these animals are freaking awesome, then my job here is done. But our job as a community has only begun. As you learned from this video, these animals are extremely important for our environment and are basically no threat to us humans. These last existing dinosaurs of our country are rapidly dwindling. Whether it's due to the illegal pet trade, habitat loss, or poaching for traditional medicine that have no scientific evidence, these animals do not deserve the treatment we've been giving them. So what can we do to start protecting these animals? Well, we can start reporting to local authorities of any wildlife trade activities, avoid buying or consuming wild animals, and of course, educating people on their magnificence. So share this with a friend, like this video to help others find it, and subscribe to my channel to learn more about the amazing world of animals. And as always, I'll see y'all in the next one. Deuces!